Today, we are visiting Stain Capital Management, an established African and frontier markets-focused equities investor located in the Wineland surrounding Cape Town, South Africa. Stain Capital has been investing in African markets since 2009 and manages over 700 million US dollars in South African longshore and Pan-African and frontier long-only funds. All of these mandates are managed with the same value-oriented intensive research focus and all have outperformed their respective markets since inception, with little to no overlap between each other. The company has a team of 16, with 10 on the investment side and 6 on the operational side. Our meeting today will be with André Stein, who is the firm's founder and portfolio manager of the African Strategies. Hi. I'm Andre Stein, founder and portfolio manager of Stein Capital Management. Welcome to our offices. Thank you, Andre, and welcome back on our show. We spoke last a decade ago. What has been your main experience since then? Hi Matthias, it's nice to see you again. Thanks for having me back on. As you mentioned, it's been almost 10 years since the two of us last spoke, and it's certainly been a very exciting journey on our side. We've continued applying research techniques learned at billion dollar funds like Ziff Brothers Investments and Temujin, both in the US and in the UK, into less efficient markets. And this has enabled us to continue chipping off alpha for our clients, both on the long and the short sides in our South African hedge fund, as well as on the long side in our Pan-Africa fund. It's also enabled us to grow our team over time from three people when we last spoke to 16 people now. And this in turn has allowed us to expand our strategy into other geographies that are less efficient, like Global Frontier, which is a strategy run by my colleague Bernard Kressel. It's certainly been a very interesting and exciting time for us. And I've got some interesting war stories later on in our program. Andre, you have a different starting point in the investment industry. Please tell us more about that and also explain to us the benefit of that background to your current strategies. So I started my career as a dedicated short selling analyst at Ziff Brothers Investments applying forensic accounting research methods to ferret out short sales. This is almost certainly a different starting point to any other analyst involved in either African or frontier investment markets. And this has resulted in our short selling record being quite exceptional. In our South African long short strategy over a period of 13 years, we have produced cumulative alpha of over 400 percentage points on the short side. In markets where we can't short sell, such as Africa and most of Global Frontier, being a good fundamental short seller is still an exceptional advantage because we are able to invert that approach and avoid short sales on the long side. So we run a checklist approach. We figure it works for airline pilots to not crash the plane. And for that same reason, we apply a 15 step research process, which is embedded into our custom written research software. And very early on in that process, we look at every potential long from a short selling point of view, scrutinizing the earnings quality. And this is a great time saver and it, it increases our return on time uh, quite exceptionally because we were able to very, very early on in the process, skip over any potential short sales and move on to the next idea. This has certainly been a big advantage for us, and it's in keeping with our approach to utilize these research techniques learned at brand name developed funds into markets that are much less efficient. And certainly Africa is, is a market like that where we are still able to utilize these research techniques to find companies that are either unknown or unloved and generate alpha for our investors. Andre, why should investors have an allocation to Africa at this point?
So our reason for existence as a firm, as mentioned, is to seek out market inefficiencies. And after having done this for more than a decade in Africa, I can tell you that there are no markets quite as inefficient as the African markets. In addition, we also think that there are some tailwinds that investors aren't paying for. Africa has exceptional demographics, with a working age population of 700 million expected to rise to well over a billion in the next 15 years. This stands in very, very sharp contrast to much of the rest of the world, which is seeing population stagnation and even declines over the next 20 and 30 years. The implication for demand for infrastructure, housing and consumer goods should be very, very clear. Africa is also seeing very fast levels of urbanization, with approximately 25 million people a year moving to cities, creating more built-in demand for infrastructure, housing and consumer goods. At the same time, the continent is home to approximately 30% of the world's natural resources, much of this um, being undeveloped and only now moving into focus for international investors. As I mentioned, the interesting part is that investors currently don't have to pay for any of this. Our portfolio, which is a concentrated portfolio of 17 businesses, traded approximately six times enterprise value of EBIT, which is the cheapest valuation that it's been at over the last decade, in spite of being at the highest levels of company quality that it's ever been. If we look across the businesses that we own, the weighted average return on invested capital is over 50%, suggesting very, very high quality businesses. But the most astounding statistic really is that these businesses have a weighted average market share of approximately 70%. And that's reflective of a level of market dominance, which is only achievable in some of these frontier markets. Multinational businesses that we speak to tell us that they see Africa as a multi-decade growth story, and we are very, very excited to be a part of it. And what advantages does your firm have investing in Africa and frontier markets? Thank you, Matthias. I think we have four competitive advantages when it comes to investing in less efficient markets like Africa. The first one is that we operate with a proprietary screen where we have a team of three idea generation analysts who comb over source financial statements and utilize their accounting skills to adjust our screen for low quality earnings, high quality earnings, hidden assets and hidden liabilities. And this gives us an exceptional starting point for research. Our team has also over the last decade whittled that screen down to a proprietary universe of 500 high quality African businesses by eliminating over time low quality businesses as well as many extractive industries. Secondly, we focus on higher quality businesses which are not perceived or priced as such. In frontier markets, many of our competitors tend to focus on big index constituent names, whereas we have been generalists, myself and my team, for uh, the last almost two decades. And I think that our skills at handicapping quality businesses is far superior than many other competitors. We've consistently been paid owning these higher quality businesses, which have not been perceived as such. The third competitive advantage is that we utilize what I learned at Ziff to apply forensic accounting analysis as well as value added research to both weed out accounting um, misstatements and frauds, as well as generate a real edge into our investment holdings. So value added research means don't just talk to the management team, try to find customers, competitors and suppliers, Whereas forensic accounting means that there are many ways for public companies to manipulate their financial results and having great skills at determining which parts of earnings are real and which parts of earnings are fabricated is a great way to discern um, which companies are reporting earnings above fundamental levels. In the fourth place, 
we have a demonstrated record of keeping our funds small enough to be nimble in these less efficient markets. Over time, we have had instances where we have stopped taking in new investments to protect the interest of our existing investors. However, we've, we do have the resources in our funds to be able to afford top-notch research and operational talent. At the same time, we think that the investment opportunities in Africa are interesting enough for us to reopen our funds, and we do have open and available capacity of approximately $400 million. What opportunities are you seeing across African markets? And I wonder, can you also give us some examples of the inefficiencies you have been talking about? We are currently targeting opportunities in African franchise consumer businesses, including many of the leading brewers across African markets, which, despite having market shares of 80% and above and growing volumes at multiples of developed market peers, are trading at substantial discounts. We're also targeting opportunities in mobile telecom businesses with fintech businesses attached to them. Some of these companies are operating as de facto monopolies, and we see tremendous growth um, for these businesses in the future. And lastly, we're seeing a variety of opportunities in African infrastructure businesses, including owners of irreplaceable assets like container port terminals, which represent a way of obtaining what I would call almost a royalty on African growth over the long term. Because we've been operating in these markets for more than a decade, we've developed a very good network and rapport with uh, brokers uh, across the continent, which send us some interesting flow. And one of the uh, more recent examples of this was late last year when we had the opportunity to acquire 7.5% of Heineken's uh, business in Rwanda. We knew this block was coming from a fund that was liquidating uh, and we made a somewhat cheeky bid of 50 francs for the entire block when the stock was trading at 100. Uh, this bid was accepted uh, and the company subsequently has reported earnings up almost 100%, leading the stock to uh, slightly more than double. We still think it's it's very undervalued and it still is one of our core holdings. All of this is a result of investor apathy across Africa. We have seen over the last several years a significant amount of, of money exiting the market, creating some of these inefficiencies, but also at the same time, we have been bumping into some sovereign wealth funds across the African markets. And we don't expect this investor apathy to last forever. However, we are very, very excited uh, about the potential for African investment markets over the long term, and we're very, very happy to be here. Thank you, Matthias.